well known in the beauty industry that Estee Lauder is one of those companies that you just have to work for at least once in your life. So um, to be offered the communications manager role, I was, uh, it was honestly one of my um, dreams. So I was wrapped. And I was actually always wanting to be a journalist. So my degree was, uh, I majored in journalism and public relations and I sub-majored in psychology. And it wasn't until my final year of university that I actually fell into PR. I won an internship at De Beers Diamonds and um, I think on the first day I was taken to a Harper's Bazaar shoot and have to say after that I was like hook, line and sinker, PR is for me and um, and absolutely loved it. So And it's great because I still obviously work with uh, all the journalists and the media anyway. So um, um, yeah, I, I kind of fell into it but I'm thrilled and have loved it ever since. I think I because I wasn't from Sydney, I'm actually a Perth girl, so suddenly you kind of, um, you arrive and you have to really get a, a a network base going and um, I lived for a few years in London when I was 18 and it's funny I often look back and think it was actually easier for me to move to London at I was 18 and two days old than it was for me to move to Sydney because at least in in London I had an accent and people like oh she's Australian so come and join us and and you know let's go on holiday and that sort of thing whereas Sydney I moved here and I did my degree but I didn't know anyone so suddenly having to establish, you know, not just media relations, but other networks um, that have become very beneficial to draw off um, throughout my career. It was such a lovely feeling. Uh, it was completely by surprise. Um, it, um, it, was just, it was just a lovely award to win, um, as obviously it's, it's um, determined by beauty, the people at Beauty Directory, but also by the media. And um, we have a lot of respect for the Australian media. I think well, globally they're so highly regarded. So to, for them to then nominate Estee Lauder having won the, um, the uh, award for last year, was, it was just a lovely feeling. So completely by surprise, but we were thrilled. I think there was, um, it was a culmination of um, a few things. Um, we held the event at the Park Height in Sydney, which is obviously a gorgeous hotel, and it was on a, a Monday evening, so, you know, the, the, the room overlooked the city, the beautiful skyline, um, but part of the, part of the launch um, had a very serious, there was a very serious side to it, so we had to present a very technical, um, you know, PowerPoint presentation to the media, but we wanted to do it in a very intimate and elegant uh, environment, so, um, one of the things that actually happened on the night, and this was actually com nothing to do with us, so we were completely taken cl completely by surprise, but at the end of my speech, the uh, Sydney Harbour lit up with fireworks, oh, and it was all just timing. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but um, it really added a little bit of specialness to the night. And then obviously the editors were then invited to stay overnight in their own Park Hyatt suite. And um, as we all know, a hotel room is pretty boring on your own, so we actually invited their boyfriends and husbands to join them as well, so they can make it a bit more fun. So I think that's maybe why it became quite memorable. I'll be honest, I'm really, um, I'm not sure what I would do. I don't know if anyone would want me. I know my husband keeps hinting that he'd love me to work in the dental surgery, but I I absolutely wouldn't do that. Um, perhaps if I were to do something different, um, it might be to do something with charity. I've always been involved in a lot of different charities, I think from the age of about five, and um, I think it's very important. Uh, we're so lucky in, in PR and, and also in the beauty industry, all the opportunities and the travel and the people we get to meet and the wonderful experiences we get to have. I think it's very important to be able to give back. So if I were to do something different, I'd probably um, be more aligned with uh, various charities that I've been involved with. When I was five or six, I used to go and visit um, an old man who lived opposite my, my primary school and, and um, he was um, an old war veteran and, and I used to just visit him after school probably because he had lots of lovely cakes and biscuits <laughs> and things. But um, you know, I think just he really appreciated having a, you know, a child um, who would come and he would talk to and, and he'd tell me all these horror stories about the Burma Railway and, and I, I think I just used to like um, riding around on his motorised <laughs> wheelchair more than anything. But, um, you know, and then, uh, then I would do, you know, World Vision or I'd feed the homeless on, you know, on Monday nights mm -hmm. for years or I, um, later in life a few years ago I had um, uh, a gentleman who was um, living in, a, in the Burwood uh, 
old people's home mm -hmm. and he had no family and um, I used to just go and see him on weekends and you know this was a few years ago and I thought I don't have money to give him but I certainly have my time and, mm -hmm. and seeing him was just the most rewarding experience I think I've ever had and unfortunately he died a few years ago and that was devastating because I just think it's so sad to live your whole life and end up all alone mm -hmm. and have no one come to visit you so that was um, that was something uh, um, I, I did and I was very passionate about um, and then the next thing I'm doing is I'm actually climbing Kilimanjaro in July for the Humpty Dumpty Foundation wow. so I'm not quite sure how I've signed myself up to that because I'm not exactly the fittest person in the world but um, you know I have to raise money for Humpty Dumpty Charity which uh, provides medical equipment for infants and babies so um, to save lives so you know I think it's um, very important to have your finger in a few different pies and, and be able to give back any way you can. Yes, I've started <laughs> training. Um, it doesn't look like it now, but um, I'm, I'm an asthmatic, so it's very important for me to uh, kind of build up my lungs and that kind of thing. So I'm, um, I'm trying to, I'm doing a bit more swimming and obviously a lot of long walks. Um, I think we have to do like eight hour walks on weekends because it's an eight day trek. So. Um, I'll let you know how it goes closer to the time. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm starting to train now.